से बोलिए भगवान of bhagwan from the pages of shiva mahapuran katha at this point in time khara ho jaye let us all stand as we join together in bhagwan shankar ji ki aarti sajan chavarshitam yuktam vahinayo jitam maya deepam graha जय शिव ओंकारा हर शिव
संतन की जय सियापति रामचंद्र की जय आस नीचे कांगे बी सी डेपुटीज ऑफिशियटिंग पुजारी पंडित पंडित सुरेंद्र महाराज पंडित विनायक महाराज श्रोतागण भक्तजन डेपुटीज ऑफ गॉड वंस अगेन टुनाइट ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द मैनेजमेंट कमेटी हियर एट दिस Shri Ganesh Mandir, let me extend to you Shubh Swagatam, a very special welcome to this fortnight of devotion. What a wonderful blessing therefore it is, my dear friends, for us to all come together in this wonderful atmosphere afforded to us to delve into the golden pages of Shiv Mahapuran Katha. And so as we... Prepare ourselves for devotion tonight. We join together firstly in dhyan, in meditation. And for this purpose, we assume a most comfortable form, a most comfortable posture. As we close our eyes and bring to our minds that most wondrous, beauteous form of Sadashiv Bhagwan. He Shiva Shankar, He Deen Dayalu. O all merciful Lord, tonight as we come together in this beautiful Yagya Shale, we do so with one common purpose and that is to render unto you, O Prabhu, our prema, our bhakti, our love and devotion. Bless us this night to the successful completion of our devotions here this evening. And through divine blessings and able us to receive and to understand the wonderful lessons and shrines and the pages of Shiva Puran Katha. And so as we focus our thoughts and energies in this manner, we now blend our voices as we pay respects to Bhagwan in his manifold manifestations. Om 
श्वेत परमासन देवी श्वेत पुष्पो As the bridge was about to be built here, to go to Lanka, even as Hanuman Swami, Sugriv, Angad and others uprooted entire mountains and brought it to the seashore, Sri Ram declared, before this bridge can actually be constructed, it is my desire to perform puja, worship of my Lord, Shankar Bhagwan. And so my dear friends, right there on the seashore, a Shiv Lingam was found. And Bhagwan Sri Ramchandra performed worship of Sadashiv Bhagwan. 
He went on to say that worship of him without worshiping Lord Shiva, then that becomes incomplete. And similarly, worship of Lord Shiva without glorifying Bhagavan Sri Ramchandra also becomes incomplete. And so, we join together firstly in this bhajan, glorifying Bhagavan Sri Ram. Janam Safal Hogare Bande Man Mera Basale He says, he says in life's journey, life's journey life's whatever, whatever challenges, challenges, whatever obstacles that one may encounter, when you surrender to that Divine Lord, Bhagavan Sri Ram Chandra, Simply chanting, Bolo Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Bolo Ram. The blessings of Bhagwan assist us in overcoming even that which appears to be insurmountable and impossible. Janam Oh, 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 
And last night when our devotions came to an end, one devotee said to me, Baba, you sang just two lines of my favorite bhajan. Can you sing the entire bhajan? And those of you, those of us who were here last night would know that we made reference to this bhajan in our katha of Kal Bhairo. Kal Bhairo Baba being the master of time, and we were speaking, my dear friends, how time has that effect and that impact upon all of us. Without us understanding and taking notice of the impact that time has upon us, my dear friends, Unknowingly, we ourselves, my dear friends, respond to the changes in time. There's a time for us to do everything. You came to devotion to the mandir here at a particular time because you know our devotion ends at a particular time. And we were making the point, you know, in last night's kata, there's a time of birth, there's a time of death. There's a time for the children to go to school, a time for them to become married, a time for them to have children and a family of their own. Time, we had said, controls all of us. And unknowingly, my dear friends, without us knowing, Karl Bhairav Baba also has that control over us as well. And so in that context, we had just sung two lines of this beautiful bhajan, which we will sing the entirety of tonight. Chalti chakki dekh ke Diya kabira roi Do patan ke beech me Sabat bacha Kabir Das describes this body or compares this body to a log. Now you may wonder, you may ask, what can this body have in common with a log? He says, just as a log would pass through the blade of the sawmill, before it went through the saw, it was one entity, one log. When it came out on the other side of that saw, it became a few pieces of board. Similarly, we are all passing through the saw of time. The saw of time has already taken effect upon us. How you looked when you were 10 years old, how you looked when you were 20 or 25 years old, is different from how you look now. And when the final saw takes effect upon us, my dear friends, just like the piece of log becoming a few pieces of board, so too, when that final stroke of time falls upon us, at the time of death, we become a handful of ashes. The body is placed upon the chitta, upon the paya, and burnt away to ashes. This is the comparison the bhajan makes, my dear friends, with regards to the passage of time and how you and I are also part of that passage of time. Sabra Pacha, do the Kajak, 
सभी मेला सब चला सभी का खेला दो दिन का सब सभी मेला सब चला सभी का We have looked at 60 names of Lord Shiva so far. For the first three nights of this yajna, we have looked at the meanings of the first 60 names of Lord Shiva. And so tonight, we'll do 20 more. And of course, last night, we stopped at the 60th name, Parantapas. That's the 60th name of Lord Shiva, which means he's a lord of tapasya, param tapas. He often sits upon Kailash Parvat, my dear friends, engaged in tapasya. The 61st name is Aj. Aj means unborn. Lord Shiva, my dear friends, is not subjected to birth and death as you and I are subjected to birth and death. And so when we call him Aj, 
The 61st name, this refers to Bhagwan Shiva Shankar Ji as being own born. The 62nd name, Shashwat, which means permanent. And of course, this connects with the 61st name. If he is unborn, then he will always be permanent, my dear friends, upon this earthly planet on Kailash Parvat, his abode. You know, Sometimes you go to apply for your passport or some other application and they ask for your permanent address. And of course, we put Joe Country's Pinal or San Francisco Road Pinal and so on as the case may be. But what really is permanent devotees? Lord Shiva is the only permanent resident on this earthly planet. Permanent, if you look for the dictionary meaning, means anything that is totally immovable, that would not change over time at all. But whether you live to be 75 years, even 100 years, that too is temporary. That is not permanent. When we refer to Lord Shiva Shashvat, this refers to the Divine Lord Shankar Bhagwan as permanent. Maha Anand. Which means he is a storehouse of happiness. When we pray to him, my dear friends, his blessings conveys that happiness to us, to our homes, to our family members. So Maha Anand, the 63rd name of Shankar Bhagwan, my dear friends, we pray to him for his blessings to confer upon us that Anand, that bliss, that happiness. Shrimat, name number 64, means he is a glorious one. And of course, he is glorified around the world. Just as we are engaged in devotion here tonight to Sadashiv Bhagwan, so too, my dear friends, across the country and across the world at this point in time, many, many thousands of devotees are similarly engaged in glorifying that divine Lord, Shankar Bhagwan. The 65th name is Dhruv. Dhruv means steady. In whatever you do in life, my dear friends, your attention, your energy, your devotion, your dedication must be steady. Whenever it is wavering, my dear friends, we would not get the results that we desire. If the children are in school, they must be steady in their educational pursuits at home you must be steady in what you do as a householder as a hindu you must be steady my dear friends in what we do in the performance of our religious duties and so again these are the manifold blessings of Shankar Bhagwan. When we speak of 108 names, when we call these 108 names, my dear friends, without understanding the meaning, then we do not know what exactly we are praying for, what benefit, what blessings do we seek. Only when we understand the meaning of the names of Sadashiv Bhagwan, you will understand the multiplicity of blessings that can be attained at the feet of Lord Shiva. Number 66, Tirtha Roop, which means he is the king of all Tirat, of all the holy places, my dear friends. Kailash Parvat is described as the greatest of all. And so you would go to Ayodhya, you would go to Mathura, uh, Kashi, Varanasi, and many other cities. But Kailash, my dear friends, is the holiest of all. And of course, right here in Trinidad, we do not have that direct avenue to go to all of these holy places. But my dear friends, the Mandir becomes our place of Tirat. It is here the Pujan is performed. It is here the Katha is read. It is here that the Divine Lord is glorified. And so, my dear friends, this mandir itself becomes like a place of Tirat. Videshwar, name number 67, means he is a lord of heroes. 69, Guru. And indeed, my dear friends, he is a guru to all of us. So you may have your... Vidya Guru, your earthly Guru, who has performed the uh, Guru Muksan's card, but Lord Shiva is Jagat Guru. 69 Abhiram, which means he is the 
devotee of Bhagwan Shri Ram, Abhiram, not Abhiman, eh? that's two different names, it may sound close, it may sound similar, but two different names, Abhiram is the devotee of Lord Shiva. Very often, you know, upon Kailash Parvat, he would close his eyes and he would go into deep state of Samadhi and he's meditating on Bhagwan Sri Ramchandra. So for this reason, he's also called Abhiram. So we must try to be Abhiram and not Abhiman. Okay? Number 70, Vaidya. Vaidya means physician, a doctor. You know, when Lakshman got Shaktivan, Vaid Sushen was called to revive Lakshman. He requested to bring the Mool Sajivan, and Hanumanji bought the entire mountain and the Mool Sajivan as well. Lord Shiva is Vaidya. He is also a physician, also a doctor, my dear friends. Of course, he administers to all his devotees, removing all pain, sickness, and suffering, and so on. 71, Ahaspati, which means he is the Lord of the day, the night, the sun, and the moon. Surya Narayan Swami, Chandra Devata, my dear friends, of course, Surya Narayan Swami, Bhagwan presides over the daytime. The light of the sun removes the darkness of the nighttime. Chandrama Devata, of course, the moon, of course, goes through different phases, the new moon and full moon and so on. But when we refer to Lord Shiva as Ahaspati, he is the Lord of the day, the night, and also the Lord of Bhagwan Surya and Chandrama. 72, Nitya means the eternal one. Eternal, my dear friends, refers to the fact that he is without beginning or end. Dhyaya, number 73, worthy of being meditated upon. 74, Pranav, which symbolizes the mystical syllable Om. That sound Om was heard at the creation of this universe. Lord Shiva symbolizes that mystical syllable Om, which means Pranav. 75, Bhal Yantra. With the eye, the third eye, on the forehead. Of course, we have two physical eyes. But Shankar Bhagwan, you know, when Kamdev had gone to Kailash Parvat, Raja Indra had said to him, Kamdev, Lord Shiva is engaged in kathin tapasya, difficult tapasya. And if he succeeds in so doing, O Kamdev, his powers would become unparalleled. You must interrupt, you must disrupt his tapasya. And so Kamdev had gone, you know, and he had danced and he taken the uh, Gandharvas and so on, and they had played music, they had tried to disturb uh, Lord Shiva. And finally, when Kamdev shot an arrow into the chest of Lord Shiva, it was only then, my dear friends, that he opened his eyes. And as he opened that third eye, Bhala Netra, my dear friends, he burned Kamdev to ashes. Number 76, Atma Bahu, he who is self-born. And when we spoke of Aj, the 61st name, unborn, this coincides and correlates, my dear friends, with Atma Bahu, he who is self-born. You know, sometimes people ask, well, Baba, we know who is Lord Rama, who is Sri Ram, uh, earthly father, of course, Raja Dashrat. And, you know, all the avatars, we know who were their earthly parents. But who are the parents of Lord Shiva? And here, my dear friends, the answer is given. He who is Atma Bahu, that means he is self-born. He who is Aj, he who is unborn, does not have any parents. So to answer that question, my dear friends, the name, the, the answer is actually given here. So Atma Bahu, my dear friends, means he is self-born. At the time of creation, you know, when you read um, Brahma Puran, it tells us, it describes to us what was happening at the time of creation. And my dear friends, these three entities, Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu and of course Shankar Bhagwan were there at the time of creation. Number 77, Kaladhar, the master of the arts. He's very artful. He's Nataraj, 
a great dancer, not the type of dance that we are accustomed to, but Nataraj, my dear friends, is the celestial, cosmic dance that Shankar Bhagwan performs upon Kailash Parvat. 78 Achal, which means on moving. And this comes from the fact this name is attributed to him to the fact that he would sit sometimes for years, my dear friends, on end in one spot upon Kailash Parvat in Tapasya, a deep state of Samadhi. 79 Shabdapati, the master of all words, worlds, the master of all lokas, Mrityu Lok, Vaikuntu Lok, Pata Lok, and so on. Number 80, Japya, worthy of being, his name is worthy of being repeated. So Japya, all of us perform Jap, Mantra Jap. And his name, my dear friends, the name of, Sadat, of Shankar Bhagwan is worthy of being repeated. And it is worthy of being repeated, my dear friends, because of the great benefits that can be attained through the repetition of his divine name. Jaha jaha main jata shiva ji Jaha jaha main jata prabhu ji Wherever you go, wherever you go Sing the, sing the, sing the, sing the glorify the, glorify the, the name of, of Shankar Shankar. Mandir, Masjid, Guru Dwari, Dwari, Shiva Ji, Shiva Ji, Samai. Whether you go to the Mandir, to the Masjid, Guru Dwara, we chant the name of Lord Shiva. Jaha 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 Jata Shiva Ji Jaha Jaha Jata Prabhu Ji Geet Tumhari Gata Geet Tumhari Gata Geet Tumhari Gata Oh, 
Tonight we read of the auspicious observance of Pradosh Vrat. We shall find out in tonight's Katha, my dear friends, the benefits of this Vrat and how it should be observed. Shivaya Nama Shiva Shivaya Nama Shiva Shivaya Nama Nama Shiva Sakoi Sakoi Let us all sing it together Shivaya Nama Shiva Shivaya Nama Shiva Shivaya Nama Nama Shiva Shiva Yama 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 Shiva Yama Suchi Shri Maharaj Maharaj Bole, He Muneshwar Bole. This wonderful Katha was first narrated by Suchi Shri Maharaj to Shaunak Muni and the other 88,000 Nishis and Munis in the Naimi Sharanya Forest. We have the wonderful opportunity, my dear friends, to read of this sacred Katha that was firstly expounded many thousands of years ago in the name Sharan. Shiva 
अब हम प्रदोष व्रत का वर्णन करते हैं कि प्रदोष व्रत शिव जी की बहु प्रिया और सब बड़े मनोरथों को देने वाला है वह स्त्री पुरुष धन्य है जो इस व्रत की करते हैं उचित ही कि सब महीनों के दोनों पक्षों में त्रयोदशी व्रत करके निर्जल रहे सो इस व्रत का विधान ऐसा है कि प्रभार को स्नान कर निश्चय किया और सदाशिव भगवान की पूजा करो उस समय कोई संसारी कार्य न करना चाहिए जब तीन घड़ी दिन शेष रहे तो सामर्थ्य के अनुसार आप फिर स्नान करो और मौन सार श्वेत अंबर पहने संध्या का जप करके शिव जी भगवान ध्यान करो और सरा शिव जी के प्रेम की सात सारी पूर्ण जाती सब चीजें इकट्ठी कर शिव जी की प्रसन्न करे यथा शक्ति शिव जी भगवान की पूजा कर मन में अति प्रसन्न हो और अपने सर्व परिवार सहित सही सदा शिव जी की पूजा कर स्तुति पूर्वक दंडवत करो शिवाय नम शिव शिवाय नम शिव शिवाय नमो नम शिवाय शिवाय नम शिव शिवाय नम शिव शिवाय नमो नम शिवाय शिवाय नमो प्रेम से बड़े श्रमापति महारेव की जय शौनक मुनि हज आसुत जी महाराज यू हु आर मोस्ट नॉलेजेबल ओ सुत जी वी फर्स्टली पे आवर रिस्पेक्ट्स टू यू वी डिजायर टू नो टू लर्न ऑफ प्ररोश व्रत ऑब्जर्वेंस Tell us, Tell us when this vrat should be observed, the bidhi or the procedure for observing this vrat, and also tell us of someone who have observed this vrat and what benefit, what benef blessings they were they were able to attain through the observance of this pradosh vrat. And so, Suchi Ji Maharaj says to him, O Shona, you are truly blessed. For entertaining this desire to listen to this katha, this katha would be read now, but it will would be read for many thousands of years to come. And whenever this katha would be read, and devotees would be enlightened about pradosh prat, oh Shaunak Muni, you too will continue to receive such blessings because it is it is on account of you that this katha is being read. My dear, My dear friends, in a similar, in a similar manner, manner, whomever acts, acts in such a, such a manner to bring together, together a yagya, to put together, together a yagya, yagya for five nights, five nights for seven nights, seven nine nights, nights in the case, case maybe, maybe those hands, those hands are, very are very blessed. For not for only not that only individual or those, or those that group of individuals benefit from, benefit from the performance of that yagya, yagya but whomever would come from night to night and share in the divine katha and divine narration and blessing. of lord shiva my dear friends so many devotees would benefit and so he says to him this is an act of selflessness bhagwan shankar regards those individuals who are selfless that is to say who would work for the benefit of others who would sacrifice their own time their own energy 
to put that avenue in place, that opportunity forward, where so many devotees would benefit from the blessings of Lord Shiva. Indeed, such hands are blessed, such minds and thoughts and bodies are blessed, O Shaunak Muni, who think and act in this manner for the benefit of so many people. And so he says, this occasion of Pradosh Brat occurs twice per month on the Trayodashi Tithi, in the Shukla Paksh and the Krishna Paksh. As you know, the Hindu month is divided into two Paksh or two fortnight. The Shukla Paksh is the bright half, Krishna Paksh is the dark half. The Trayodashi means the Tithint Tithi. On that Trayodashi, Pradosh Brat is observed. And in fact, if you look at your calendar, you would see Pradosh occurring on the monthly calendar. This, my dear friends, is this very sacred Brat that uh, is being described in Shiv Puran Katha tonight. This day of Pradosh, Sutaji Maharaj says, is very sacred and loving to Lord Shiva. That devotee who will engage in the observance of this Brat is indeed looked upon also very loving by Shankar Bhagwan. How do you go about observing this Brat? Sutiji Maharaj describes, very early in the morning, during the period of Brahmahurat, one should awake from sleep. Now, Brahmahurat is 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. These hours, my dear friends, are especially conducive to worship, to puja, to meditation, to yoga. Waking up very early in the morning, of course, one should have a bath and put on light-colored clothing. White or some other light-colored clothing should be worn. And then one should make all preparations to perform puja to Lord Shiva. Every Hindu should be capable of performing simple sandhya and simple puja. We're not speaking about a time when Baba would come to your home to put up jhandi. That's different. But on a daily basis, my dear friends, puja is supposed to occur in our home, to offer a flower, to of Arati, to chant the glories of Shankar Bhagwan, to offer the Lotus of Chal, all of these things, my dear friends, we should be capable of. And so, the description given here, early in the morning at Brahmahurat, my dear friends, we wake up and of course we make preparations for Shivaji Bhagwan Putan. After we have performed Putan early in the morning to Lord Shiva, Sutaji Maharaj says that devotee should go about his normal deal duties. That's very important. That's very important. Because some people will say, I cannot observe Pradosh because I have to go to work. I have to do housework. I have to wash. I have to clean. Listen to what is being said in Shiv Puran Kata. After you perform early morning puja between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., uh, Brahmahurat period, one should then go about their normal daily duties. So in other words, you can do two things at the same time. You could do the puja in the morning, and of course that does not prevent you in any way, my dear friends, from discharging your normal daily duties. But on this day, you must observe fasting. Of course, it's a very sacred day, just as you are fasting coming up to Shivratri, observant, so too on the day of Pradoshvrat, you observe fasting on that day whilst you go to work and do all the other chores that you are accustomed to doing. At the evening time, at Sandhya hour, one should call, one should call the entire family together. Now in the morning time, it does not stress the family, it stress you as the householder. Sarva Parivar is emphasized in the evening time at Sandhya hour. The entire family should be included in the evening puja. So Pradosh Prat consists of two puja. One you do early in the morning, Brahmahurat period. You fast during the day and perform all your daily duties. In the evening time at Sandhya hour, you call the entire family together and you engage once more in puja to Lord Shiva. Very simple, my dear friends, yet this very simple observance yields tremendous benefits and blessings.
And so, and so the third question, the third question remember three questions are being asked. Being asked when is Pradosh Vrat observed? What is the procedure for observing Pradosh Vrat? And tell us of someone who have, who have observed this Vrat and how he benefited from the observance of this Vrat. So we have answered the first two questions already. It is observed twice per month on the 13th tithi in the Shukla Paksh and the Krishna Paksh, the bright half and the dark half of the month. The procedure we have identified, morning time, early morning, Brahmahurat period, you perform puja, evening time as well, Sarva Parivar, the entire family comes together in puja to Lord Shiva at Sandhya hour. Now, who has benefited from this vrat? Who have performed this vrat and benefited? And so, Sutaji Maharaj goes on to describe the katha of Raja Chandrasen, the king of Ujjaini. He was a Mahabhatta of Lord Shiva. And every month, Raja Chandra Sen would observe Pradosh Vrat. Month after month, year after year, the King Raja Chandra Sen is observing this Vrat. And you know, it's very important to note the example that has been used. The example of a king. Some people say, well, Baba, I too busy. I have to go to work, I have to see about the children, and so many other things, I just don't get the time. Who could be busier than the king? The king has to see not just about his own household, but the entire kingdom. Yet the king finds time, my dear friends, to pray to Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva is taking notice. My dear friends, Lord Shiva is very pleased with the devotion of this king. And nothing happens before time, my dear friends. Year after year, he is observing this Pradosh Vrat. And Lord Shiva turns to Mani Bhadra and he says to him, Mani Bhadra, by the way, is the messenger, one of the messengers of Lord Shiva. He says to him, Mani Bhadra, look at this wonderful devotee. He's performing uh, such regular Routine, routine observance, observance of this Pradosh Prat. We must we deliver must on to him the highest blessing. Highest blessing. And so he says to him, take this gem. This is the Chintamani gem. Take it to the king. And convey to him how happy and pleased I am with the performance of his devotion. And so Mani Bhadra took the Chintamani gem, he leaves Kailash Parvat, and he comes to the city, to the kingdom of Ujjaini. He appears in the palace of Raja Chandrasen, and he announces himself, O king, I have been sent by Lord Shiva. I am the messenger of Lord Shiva. My name is Mani Bhadra. That divine Lord is very pleased with you and your devotion, and he has given to me this gem to give to you. What is the benefit? What is the greatness of this gem? Whomever is in possession of this gem, my dear friends, all desire all goals, all wishes are fulfilled. That individual is protected from pain, sickness, suffering, and other violent attacks upon himself. That individual is shielded from premature death. That individual attains wealth and fame and recognition, my dear friends, that is unparalleled and unsurpassed. This Chintamani gem is the equivalent of the calm dhenu. The calm dhenu you would read in Adama and Katha as the wish yielding cow. Just as that calm dhenu possesses all of these great benefits and blessings, my dear friends, so too the Chintamani gem. And so he was very pleased, the king, Raja Chandrasen, was very pleased to attain this gift from Lord Shiva. He paid his respects to. Um, Mani Bhadra, and he says to them, be certain to convey my gratitude to Lord Shiva. And as Mani Bhadra left, my dear friends, Raja Chandra Sen, attaining this great gift, went into his mandir and began to glorify 
Divine Lord, Sadar Shiv Bhagavan. Dum 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 Shiv Shankar Kailash Pati Yug Yug Soya Deep Jalaya Shiv Shankar Kailash Pati The kings of the surrounding regions. 
took notice, began to take notice of the great strides that the Raja Chandrasen and his kingdom were making. His kingdom, Ujjaini, became the most prosperous, most wealthy kingdom in the entire region. Whilst many of the other kingdoms and their kings and the subjects of those kingdoms were living in poverty, that kingdom of, of Ujjaini, my dear friends, was very wealthy and prosperous. As it, as it often happens, sometimes when we make progress in life, there are those who would be supportive of us and encourage us and be happy with the progress we have made. And others, my dear friends, may be not so happy and may actually try to hold back or hinder of a progress that we are making. And so they came together, the neighboring kings, and they decided that since this kingdom of Raja Chandrasen was so wealthy and prosperous, they were going to attack him, depose him of his kingdom, and seize the wealth and riches of that kingdom of Ujjain. And so they combined all their soldiers together, and they formed one massive army. And they surrounded the kingdom of Ujjaini, my dear friends, and they sent a message to the king. You can surrender peacefully and leave, or we will enter into this kingdom, attack you, and drive you out of this kingdom, and seize hold of your wealth and riches. It just so happened, my dear friends, the day that they chose to do this was the day of Pradosh Vrat. And the king had the tali in his hand, the parasad, he was in the mandir, he was about to make offerings to Lord Shiva. And his minister of defense came and said to him, O Raja Chandrasen, stop what you are doing immediately. Your kingdom is under attack. And Raja Chandrasen said to his minister of defense, what I am about to do here, I do not put it off for anything, for any person, for any reason whatsoever. My Lord Shiva comes first. After I am completed, after I have completed this puja, then I will see about this uh, war, this attack that is on the way, that is at hand. My Lord My Shiva Lord comes Shiva. first. And to the amazement of the minister of defense, the king, instead of attending to his soldiers and dispatching his soldiers to defend his kingdom, he went to the mandir and he started to do puja. But the minister of defense was not the only one who was amazed. Lord Shiva was also amazed. Lord Shiva marveled at the utmost devotion, the powerful devotion of this king, Raja Chandrasen. And my dear friends, when the kings on the outside did not receive a reply from Raja Chandrasen, they decided it was time to attack. And Lord Shiva, my dear friends, caused all of those thousands of soldiers and the kings who were with them to become immobile. They were frozen in time. They could not move. Let us understand, my dear friends. We are here tonight through the blessings of Lord Shiva. We would wake up in the morning from sleep only if Lord Shiva wills it. Raja Chandrasen understood this. He understands that nothing is possible without the blessings of Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva declares to Parvati, Devi, I cannot allow my devotee to be attacked while he is worshipping me. You know, sometimes you hear people say, well, Baba, last year I didn't do the puja, plenty of rainfall. Uh, the year before that, family come from England. The year before that, we was changing the roof. And you wonder, you know, the excuses, they said, you know, satisfy the person who is making it and not the person who is listening to it. The promise you made to do the puja was not to Baba, first of all. You make a promise to Bhagwan to do the puja. When we allow these excuses, my dear friends, to interrupt and disrupt our puja, it is 
us. We are depriving ourselves of the blessings of Lord Shiva. Look at this king. He could have said, look, Lord Shiva, you wait today. I do in your puja all the time. Today, some urgent matter has risen, has arisen, but he says, Nahi, no, my Lord Shiva comes first. And whilst he was doing that puja, my dear friends, those soldiers and those kings could not move at all. It is only when he completed that puja did Lord Shiva release that spell, my dear friends, of immobility that he had cast upon that massive army. And when that spell was released, my dear friends, they got off their chariots and their horses, they left their weapons behind, and they entered into Ujjaini. Not as invaders, not as attackers anymore, but they entered as devotees of Lord Shiva. The blessings of Lord Shiva and the devotion of this king, Raja Chandrasen, my dear friends, had transformed that aggression, that greed of the kings to attack Raja Chandrasen, to depose him of his kingdom, had transformed all of that, my dear friends, into one of devotion of bhakti. And so, the aggressors, my dear friends, became bhaktas. They came to the kingdom. They surrounded the palace of Raja Chandrasen. But my dear friends, they came to join him now in devotion to Lord Shiva. This is the power of your devotion to Lord Shiva, my dear friends. It has that ability to transform all situations of difficulty, of danger that we may be exposed to. The blessings of Lord Shiva brought to this king great wealth and riches. And even when he had received that great gift of the Chintamani gem, my dear friends, even as his wealth and riches began to grow exponentially, Yet, he did not forget his devotion to Lord Shiva. And so, in our lives, with our families as well, this is a great lesson of devotion that we take to our families, and especially to the young children, to the Hindu boys and girls. The best gift that you can give to them, my dear friends, is the gift of devotion. You know, parents like to give their children the best of everything. But until such time as you have taught them to pray to God, you have deprived that child. And no parent likes to be told that they have deprived their children. Until such time as you have taught, you have inculcated in the mind of that child that love and devotion for puja and devotion and yajna and coming to the mandir and so on. You have deprived that child. For the joy and happiness that you feel, my dear friends, that you experience here at the mandir, listening to the katha, joining together in the puja, chanting the bhajans and so on, that joy and happiness you cannot experience anywhere else. Teach them. My dear friends, uh, to pray, to join you in puja. This, my dear friends, uh, would remain with them long after we ourselves have left this earthly planet. Uh, that gift of devotion would remain with them, my dear friends, uh, bringing to them a lifetime of joy and happiness. Guru Charanana Siddhanayike Binavati Domu Kanjor Ay Shiva 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 Come, come, come. 
At this point in time, Khara Ho Jai, let us all stand as we join together in Shankar Bhagwan Ji Ki Arati. Sajan Chavar Shitam Yuktam Oh, 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 
We bow our heads in this final prayer as we give thanks to our divine Lord Sadashi Bhagwan. We share blessings of Prabhu. We have come together tonight in the fourth night of this Yagya. We pray that the blessings of Lord Shiva will be bestowed upon each and every devotee who have come together in devotions tonight. May you, Prabhu, continue to safeguard us and protect us against all dangers and difficulties. Mantrahinam Kriyahinam Kattihinam Janadhanam Yatpujitam Mayadevam Paripurnam Tadastane Tvameva Matat 
Kindly be seated, devotees. devotees. May the grace and blessings of Lord Shiva always be with you. Ved Vyas, Pandit Rajendra Maharaj, Pujari Pandit, Pandit Surendra Maharaj, other Pandits, Sarotas, members of the Kirtan group, and you, the devotees. So I want to thank Sankhya for being here and supporting us in this mandir. And I want to thank some of the sponsors who made this possible. The sponsors are Jagmohan Enterprises, Welding and Hydraulic Engineering Services Limited, Building Resources and Company Limited, Manik Supermarket Limited, Raghunath Singh and Company Limited, Sona's Family Mart, Southern Grocery Outlet, P&R Transport, D. Baliram Tire Service and Accessories, Southern Atlantic Engineering Services Limited, and Public Supermarket. Devotees, these corporate sponsors who have made this broadcast possible. So I want to say, may Lord Shiva shower his choicest blessings upon these sponsors so that their company will grow from strength to strength. And when we approach them for finances to do some broadcast like this, they will be able to do so. So with this I say thank you. Thank you very much for taking this broadcast to us. Rang de chuneria
Ganapati Ganesh Bhagavan Ki Jai Sita Ram, dear viewers, join me, Pandit Vijay Kumar Maharaj, as we join together in puja dedicated to Lord Ganesh, as we as will be presented during the time of the Ganesh Utsav. The ingredients that we need for such puja will be a lot of water, panch amrit, piece of cotton, uh, chandan, perfume or essence, uh, a few grains of rice incense whatever you have to make your offering of prasad some flowers durva grass a pan leaf to put in front of our murti the supari and dakshina if you have sindur and hardi also this can be offered and whatever dakshina you have you can make that offering also you can get a little bit of gugul and a little bit of ghee to offer into the fire Join me right here on Sankhya Television as we will perform puja to Bhagwan Shri Ganesh during the Ganesh Utsav. Sankhya Television is not only the first Hindu TV station in Trinidad and Tobago, but Sankhya TV also has the most coverage. 